What's going on, everybody? It's Frito here for your Overwatch. Blizzard is back at it again with the wacky bans. This time, six heroes are out, four of them being DPS, all of them being either hard or soft Fara counters. On normal weeks, we rate the entire cast of heroes, but I think for such a special occasion, we'll try a bit of a different route and instead look at the cast of available heroes when all of the best Fara counters are out. So the first tip I have for you guys is that if you're a DPS player, one of the best things you're probably going to be able to do this week is to mirror Fara. I think a lot of people's first instinct is go to the last range hit scan left in Ash. I got to rate it a little bit lower than you might think. Matching Fara instead will give you the aerial control to go at her to zone her out, either to mimic the ground damage she's doing, so you're not at a disadvantage there, or to midair battle her, which is a skill set that you can learn by watching guides on the channel that we've made even years ago on how to hit midair rockets. It's better than trying to hide behind your team playing at a bad angle when she has control of the map. Farah is a character that dominates with map control because she can use vertical cover. And if you don't have the cover or aren't set up or don't have a diva to pocket you, peeking into a Farah when she just can jiggle peek from outside of cover and you don't have a one-shot kill with Widow will be a nightmare. Take the battle to the skies to either just avoid her or go at her, but you definitely don't want a death ball up expecting to be able to long range peeker, that's a terrible idea. Now, there's a few play styles that you can go down to try to counter Farah. Sigma is going to be the best overall tank hero left because at medium range, you can pressure down Farah or Mercy or both. You can use Kinetic Grasp to absorb some of Farah's spam, and you'll want to be doing this reliably to eat a couple rockets or more to buff up your health, and he's good at pounding damage on the ground. So, from the tank position anyway, you can mimic the amount of ground AOE damage if you focus the low ground, or you can even potentially dual Fara yourself. Keep in mind, Accretion Rock is a large projectile that can zone her out in air, or you can hold it in order to interrupt Barrage, or save Kinetic Grasp for it, as well as toss a shield at her during Barrage to make her self-destruct mid-air. Keep in mind, as far as saving your team in the poke phase though, Sigma can put a shield angled upward into the sky to create sort of a blast shield bunker to deny far good angles. You will have to reposition this ever so often, but make sure that it's close to the team, sort of acting like a umbrella and denying a few rockets from coming through can be the difference of your team living or dying. Otherwise for tank picks though, and as you'll see, I have these organized as tank DPS and support. That's the order we'll go through them. So we're looking at the left-hand side of the tier list here. You want to avoid the ground in pound type characters like Reinhardt and Zarya who just don't interact with Farah in any way basically don't pick them or is sort of a medium counter because maybe you can halter in the sky or apply pressure damage with fusion driver but she as well is kind of a Reinhardt analog a bit better than him, but the bunker playstyle is one that Farah will dominate because she can just fly over your shield anyway and get damage on the people trying to use the bunker. So not advised. Winston can leap up in air to apply some pressure damage and focus fire, as well as his bubble being the best right behind Sigma to provide some protection, but it doesn't last long. You may be surprised that Roadhog and Wrecking Ball are in the top as the best counters. Why is that? Well, Farah is a character that ignores your shields anyway. She flies over them. So why play a shield and instead play these really brawly type tanks that can just go out and get kills or shoot the Farah out of the sky themselves? Don't play a defenseless tank that just has to stand there waiting for something to happen. Go spread out, get angles, and either deal more damage to the ground than she can do, because she is a slower poking character, or you can go at her directly. Hammond can swing vertically into the sky. Remember, he has some decent range too. He doesn't have to be as close as D.Va, but he can apply pressure to the Farah or Mercy. And Roadhog takes forever for Farah to kill. She has no stun. He does, so he can take her out of Barrage or even hook her out of the air. Now, that's it for the tanks. Moving on to the DPS now, I'm putting Ash in only the soft counters list. Reason being is that Ash's strongest play is dynamiting 
a death ball. She's not really built to deal with Farah in a dominant way like Widowmaker or McCree can. Farah has far better mobility and plays a lot faster and will be able to dive bomb you without strong peel characters like D.Va existing. So if you have a good sight line and the Farah plays badly, fine. But the moment you realize that's not working or if you don't have control of the map, you're going to realize that Coach Gun and Dynamite don't do anything to Farah really. And when you have to scope up with Ash to hit at least two shots, you're presenting a very easy hitbox for Farah to hit in about the same amount of time and she has splash damage and you don't. So instead, I think the best DPS left is Tracer. If you're not going to play Farah yourself, maybe you can play them both. Tracer can zip around avoiding Farah or even use jump packs or verticality to go at her mid-air. Remember, Tracer got a range buff as well, so poking her down and dodging her is a doable thing or ignoring her, zipping around, farming up pulse bomb to get faster picks on the ground. And that's, of course, the two ways you can go about countering Farah. Either go at her or go at her team faster than she can. And that's where the other soft counter picks on the ground are with Reaper and Doomfist, who in theory lose to Farah, but the matchup is much more fair when you largely ignore her and just jump on something when there's no D.Va. It depends on what tanks they have, of course. Going up against Sigma as Reaper is kind of meh, so it will be matchup specific, but because Farah needs to hit multiple shots on these targets that get extra health or heal themselves, Farah has the chance to counter them. It's just kind of slow, so it's a race to see who can do more damage faster. As far as the supports go, avoid Brig when the Farah's beating you, but remember, Brig might be a decent counter if your DPS is doing a good job at dealing with her. The Brig armor on a Farah is insane, but only pick her if you feel you can win that ground and pound battle. It's not going to stop her from taking over the game necessarily, but importantly, the best supports to consider is Ana. Maybe you should have reorganized this because realistically, Ana is the best hit scan in the game left to deal with Farah, way better than Ash. Because Ana's more flexible with how she can shoot, you can shoot a projectile or quick scope more easily, doesn't have range drop off, can potentially sleep her out of the sky or out of barrage, and Ana can heal herself, which gives her an advantage in the duel that a character like Ash doesn't have. All other things being equal, Zenyatta is decent against Farah as well, but not when he loses map control, then he just looks like another helpless ground character that she can farm, but if you have good angles, discording her will help the team focus. You probably have a far on your team, so healing her with Harmony Orb is pretty good, and Transcendence counters Barrage. Otherwise, of course, you got to consider Mercy in this as well, either to synergize with your own Farah or to help Ash get those one-shot kills against her, and you may find that less mobile characters that can't fly in the sky will be more exploitable by Farah's coming in on you. Also keep in mind that Lucio and Moira are decent against Farah in the ignore her and win the ground battle game. Moira really can heal up her spam damage and get an early coalescence that can delete her from the sky. So if you get the team, just remember to prioritize those heal orbs to keep your team alive as she's poking you down. And Lucio will be required if the Farah has control of the map. I can't stress enough how easy it is to hit range projectiles on slow moving targets as they pass through very obvious travel lanes. Lucio is an absolute must pick if you're running some of these slower characters that are either countered by Farah or are going for the low ground out damage her play style. Closing the distance quickly raises the rate that you can swarm the enemy and chase them down before Farah can take over the game. All the way here at the bottom of the avoid lists are in no particular order, all sorts of characters that either get pounded on by Farah because they set up turrets or can't fire back or too easy to dive or struggle to aim up at her. There are worlds where some of these options can work for the focus the ground play style, but I don't suggest you chance it. Well, that's it for today's video. Let me know how you liked this focused approach. I don't think each week will be as obvious as this in terms of what picks everybody is going to be running. I think in previous weeks, it was much more nuanced and I had to consider multiple types of comps. But this week, I think people are just going to very clearly see that Farah has tons of counters removed and are going to be playing a lot of her, whether that's effective at high tiers or not. I think it will be in the average level of play. So I think it worked out covering it this way. But let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. If you did enjoy the video, please be sure to leave it a like. It really does help us out. Let's us know that you're enjoying the content. And if you haven't already, hit subscribe and hit the bell icon to actually get notified when our videos go live. Link to the description is our Twitter. Where we tweet out news, updates, and each week's hero ban rotation when they come out. So hit us a follow on there so you can stay updated. That's been it for me. I've been Frito for your Overwatch. We'll see you guys next time.